All right, fine friends, how are you doing? Andy Cotterell here. We have a special guest tonight for my first ever video interview of this sort. Uh, Justin Bourgeois. Justin, thank you very much for agreeing to speak with me. I appreciate it. No problem. Thanks for having me. So, oh, you, it's my pleasure. So I think there's a bit of, bit of a delay. As with any new technology, there's always a little bit of figuring out and stuff. So Justin and I just spent like 10, 15 minutes trying to get this sorted out. I felt pretty stupid, to be honest. But uh, between the two of us, we got it kind of sort of working. So let's see how this goes. And hopefully I'm not messaging you tomorrow and saying, hey, let's have a redo. <laughs> yeah, that's right. We got to figure it out now. Okay, I still think it's a bit of an audio lag, but we'll uh, we'll work on that. So, Justin, uh, uh, the reason why we're chatting here tonight is because you just had what well, I don't know if you consider it the fight eerie career, but uh, you actually went all the way from Canada. You had I think all your fights in Canada, fourteen fights before this past weekend, and you went to to Dijon, France, and had a fight for the Kingdom Challenge Championship. Is that right? Yep. Yes, I did. Yeah. So, tell me about that experience. What? what um, it was, it was so you go awesome, ahead. Man. Uh, it was, it was pretty good. Like, uh, we, f we had a layover in Toronto and then flew into Paris from Toronto. Um, it was a seven hour flight. And then from Paris, we went from, uh, it was a four hour drive into Dijon. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So tell me how this fight got started. Did, how did you get contacted? Because, I know when, you know, I'm very familiar with Canadian mixed martial arts. Sometimes we'll bring in, or a promotion here, we'll bring in a fighter from France or from England or from some other random country in Europe. How do promotions go about finding an opponent like you to come all the way from Canada to fight their fighter? Well, I was contacted from an MMA management company out of Montreal. And I don't know if they were just like looking for veteran fighters, like maybe possibly that, you know, guys that were going to actually show up, I'm assuming. But um, I was contacted through them and then we just negotiated through them back and forth. There was, you know, there was a lot of, uh, there's actually a lot of hurdles to actually get me the fight, get me there to do it. And, mm. um, but yep, that's how it all ended up transpiring. So how challenging was it for you to, you said there were a bunch of hoops you had to jump through. So how did it uh, work out with medicals and did you have the same safety requirements that we have here in Canada? Um, yeah, yes and no. They, they, their commission is like very minimal, like compared to ours, like for extensive, extensive work, right? Like um, when I was there, actually nobody, nobody even watched me wrap my hands which I found kind of odd. I was like, okay, you know, I'm ready to wrap up and warm up. And I was, I was next to go. And like, mm -hmm. they, um, they had nobody do that. And they're very thorough, like around here watching. Right. And, uh, yeah, of course. I yeah. Had to, I actually had to find, uh, I actually found my, found my opponent and I examined his hands myself. Really? Uh, yeah. Do they, do they seem kind of sketch? How did they react when you approach them and asked to, to see his hands? Uh, they were pretty good with it. He come right down to my locker room and showed me and I examined them and whatnot. And I was like, well, you know, this ain't how we do mm. in Canada. We're very thorough. Like they're very, as soon as you get your hand wrapped in the locker room around here, like through our commission, they will follow you like even to the washroom and back. Right. Like, they're very yeah, thorough. I know. Yeah. 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 Like you can't even bring in like outside, outside food and drink in the locker room. No, no, they're very professional the way they do things, right? Like, and I wasn't expecting that one bit. And the language barrier was like, I'm not, not very good at French. You know, lucky enough, my girlfriend could, could speak some decent fluent French. So she, like there was numerous times where she was helping me and like uh, the rules meeting was the same. And, you know, you got examined by a doctor and uh, there was a few things that really pulled the wool over my eyes. Like I got there and during the rules meeting, they were like, no, nobody's throwing elbows tonight. And I was like, wow. Like, because like back home, you know, and elbows are like a big part of my strategy sometimes. Right. So mm -hmm. that was very odd. And the arena that the fight was held in Dijon, they, they have act two gyms, they have a judo gym and like a full mixed martial arts gym with a full cage and ring. This is off of like the main area where the fights are held. And okay. They 
they ended up sticking me in this small little locker room with no mats to do my jujitsu, practice my jujitsu, which I found very puzzling, right? And I went down the hallway and, you know, they have a whole... Like to warm up, you mean? Yeah, to warm up. I was like, you know, back home, yeah. we have mats on the ground and, you know, we have fluent or like adequate room to move around to warm up. And um, like, I just found it, they, they were, you know, there was times where the odds were kind of shifted in his favor, like with certain things, right? Mm. Mm. So in your small little locker room, was it just you or were that the, like the red or the blue side, whatever side you were on, were they all there? Yeah, no, it was, uh, we were in the blue corner and there was, yeah, there was some other fighters. Yeah, there were some other fighters. Mm. Yeah. So, and you said there was no commission members in there just scrutinizing things and making sure everything stayed on the up and up. Nope. No, there was, which was very puzzling, right? And like, uh, you know, and as far as, as far as the contract, we had an agreement that, you know, they, they claim that they can ask five rounds out of a fighter determining like how they displace the rounds. And okay. I, uh, you know, I signed a three, three round, round fight contract and when I got in the cage, the announcer was like, you know, this is going to be contested over two rounds, which threw me off right there. And uh, if anybody were to watch the fight. and see Oh, you mean the before fight, the fight even started? Yeah. No. Yeah. Like inside the cage. Right. So I thought I was fighting three rounds with Bryce Picard. And then if, if the winner was to go on to fight uh, Patata Roboski, I think his name was from Ukraine. Mm hmm. Yeah, and see, Bacod and Roboski, they fought before. And Bryce has beat him by leg kicks. Mm -hmm. And, yeah, so we were supposed to fight three rounds, and then whoever won out of me and Bryce were going to go on to fight Patata for the title. This is what I was told. This is what I agreed to, right? Okay. Yeah, yeah, but that didn't seem to so be wait, the case. So wait, but that wasn't a one-night tournament, was it? That wasn't fighting the next guy the same night, or was it coming back another time? No, that was the same night. Yeah. Same night. Okay. Yeah. And so just to what confirm they, what, what, just to reiterate what you said, sorry, go ahead. Well, like, um, what they, you know, I disputed the three, I had the contract in my hand. I, you know, I went right to the promoter and I'm pointing at the contract and telling them that I deserve three rounds and all this and that, because if you watch how the fight goes, I was really turning the tide in the fight, right? At the end of the second round. And yeah. And, um, he 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 told me that you know it was more of the referee's decision or the commission's decision, you know, to have a uh, to have the two rounds. Sorry, who told you that? The uh, the promoter. The promoter told me that. Well, yeah, I don't I don't recall in the past two minutes if you used the word sketchy, but I'd say that's pretty sketchy. Yeah. Well. Yeah. I didn't. Yeah. You know, I really want to fight. So, so did I hear or read somewhere that uh, Pico hurt himself? Did he break his hand or something? Well, yeah, he ended up he ended up breaking his hand, so he couldn't continue to fight Patata. This Patata uh, Robuski guy mm. from Ukraine. Yeah, he yeah, was yeah. Supposed to go on. He was supposed to go on and fight him, and uh, he said his hand was broken. Okay, so I wonder, like, I've never broken my hand, but I've heard stories about about fighters breaking their hand in a fight, and just because of the adrenaline, they're able to keep on going. So do you think, is there a possibility, I have no no knowledge or, or evidence of this, is it possible he broke his hand before going in fighting you, and that's why they reduced it to two rounds? Well, geez, that's, you know, now that you say it, that could be a very, it could be a possibility. Yeah, he did. Um, you know, he was a big puncher, a lot of looping punches. You know, we knew that going in that me and my coach Scott and, but like, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, he did throw a lot of punches. Yeah. Okay, so just to get this straight, so you signed a contract in Canada, saying you're going to go fight him for three rounds, and then the winner of that fight would go on to fight the second time in that night. Yes, sir. Yeah. And then yep. you get into the cage and the referee or the promoter looks at you and says, oh, by the way, this is no longer three rounds. This is two rounds. 
Yep. It was actually the announcer saying in French. So I was even more confused, right? As I'm in the cage. Yeah. Mm. It's kind of, it's, you're in a tough spot because what are you going to do? You're there already. You've got your fight gear on. You've got your gloves on that they didn't watch you put on. And you're ready to fight. I mean, sure, you could say no, but I mean, that's a really tough spot. Did you consider saying no? Well, you know, I kind of felt, you know, somewhat disrespected in a sense because we, you know, we have a mutual agreement to, you know, to, mm -hmm. you know, have this bout in this, in this type of way. And, you know, I've had different strategies that I was trying to implement in the fight and they were actually working until, you know, the fight was called after two rounds. Sure. And there's been a lot of confusion. As you over, said, well, I, I, yeah. So yeah, I, I, I did watch the fight. I watched the whole fight. And the first round, it, it seems like you were, you know, really, you were slow going, getting into it. Your takedowns weren't really working uh, in the first round anyway. But the second round, you're right. It did seem like you were starting to gain some control of him and things were going your way. So who knows how a third round would have gone, especially when it comes to momentum. And, you know, you've got that attitude, like I'm doing well, he's, he's gassing, I'm doing okay, I'm doing better. And then just have mm -hmm. that pulled out from under you. That's got to be really disconcerting. Yeah, absolutely. Because like my girlfriend had a live feed going on in the phone and with mm -hmm. like probably 20 seconds left, I ended up mounting them and like really raining down some good ground and pound from the mount position. Yeah. And then the round got called. They ended up, you know, raising his hand eventually. And before they, they, the, my girlfriend killed the live feed. So there was a lot of confusion on like who they thought mm -hmm. they asked a lot of my, the people and a lot of my fans thought, the referee stopped the fight, right? Okay. But he was, he like, you know, yeah. his, his gas tank was spent. Yeah. I wasn't sure either, to be honest, because when I watched the fight, I don't know if the, it was the audio or not, but, you know, in Canada or in the United States, I guess, we're used to that clacker that, that clacks 10 seconds before the end of the round. And I didn't hear that, nor did I hear any kind of bell or whistle or anything saying the round was over. I just saw the referee go in and, and intervene. So I didn't really know what was happening. Yeah, I could understand why. I'm I after the fight I realized that there was no 10 second warning either. I was trying to get my cornerman mm. to let me know like when a minute was left. Yeah. 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 But you know, the crowd was loud and it was intense. So I mean, when fighters fight, they go into you know, I've talked to so many fighters over the years and they all tell me why they fight. Uh you've got your reasons for fighting, but uh, you know, fighting is, is only part of it. You know, the rest of it that a lot of fighters get is the experience traveling, getting to meet new people, getting to see new places. So even though this didn't go your way and it's, it's kind of perplexing a lot of it, I'm not sure I'd like to be, I'd like to, I'm curious about, uh, other people's experiences fighting in Dijon, France with that area. Um, overall the experience, how was it otherwise? Oh, it was amazing. Like they treated me well first, you know, picking me up and feeding me and, you know, taking care of me like hospitality. They put me in a nice hotel room and uh, they they had a really big meal after the weigh-ins, which was pretty cool. And they were very respectful. Oh. And, yeah, they were very like, you know, they treated me really good. And I got to see Paris, you know, and uh, – me and my girlfriend got to, to travel into uh, Geneva, Switzerland, too. We rented a car, so we got to see the countryside that awesome. way and made some awesome memories. And it was a great experience, like, far as, you know, coming from Spring Hill and seeing the countryside over there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was awesome. And, like... So you mentioned uh, your... your your You've mentioned your girlfriend a handful of times, but I think you're using the wrong word, aren't you? <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. It's, this is all new to me. Yeah, my fiance. Yeah, I know. So what should you be yeah. calling her? Your fiance, yeah. Yeah, that's right. So you, you, we had a quick chat before the video about uh, about the experience, and you told me you were never so nervous in your life. I didn't, yeah. Oh, I didn't really know if I was going to do it. I was, oh. And then I got, you know, got to thinking, you know, when will we be back here again, looking at the Eiffel Tower and whatnot. But I ended up pulling it off. Yeah. Yeah, awesome. Well, good for you. Congratulations to you both. Thanks, Andy, bud. Thanks, man. So tell me, Justin, even though it sounds like it was a mixed bag, right? You had some great experiences. Uh, however, you know, I can imagine that the way that 
that fight transpired, it might leave a little bit of a sour taste in your mouth. Overall, would you walk away from the experience thinking of it as a positive one, a negative one, or somewhere in between? Um, that's a great question. I would like to think it was more of a positive experience, right? I feel I like to feel like the you know the journey's a lot worth a lot more than the destination sometimes, and like mm -hmm. a lot of good positive things come from it. And I got to bring my buddy that was a uh, you know, an old training partner, Scott couldn't make the fight. The dates weren't working out for him, his work and whatnot. So it was really cool on, on his end to come along with me and help me out. And, you know, my, me and my girlfriend got to see the country. And, uh, yeah, overall, it was it was really good, positive experience. And, you know, they were pretty good to me. Yeah. Well, that's, that's good to hear. And, you know, when we go through positive life experiences like that, or negative ones, but experiences in general – uh, for most of us, after a while, we sit down and we relax and we get to reflect a little bit on the experience. So if it's okay with you, I'd like to read uh, to the to the viewers something you wrote on social media, you know, the day or two after you got home. Would, would that be okay with you? Absolutely. Yep, no okay, problem. I'm going to your profile right now and I'm going to read this out loud. And this is from Justin 12 hours ago. Okay. To the kid that feels worthless, to the kid that was told he wasn't going to make it to be anything, to the kid that maybe wants to join mixed martial arts or sports but doesn't have enough money, I understand the pain is raw and you don't think anyone will understand your story. I lived that life and said the very same shit. I can promise you there is hope. I've seen lots of ups and downs. You don't have to let your past define what your future is going to look like. Heal so you can hear what's being said without the filter of your wounds. My first fight, I made $300, and now I'm here returning from Paris, France, with my 15th pro fight behind me and engaged to the girl of my dreams. I am the uncrowned kingdom featherweight champion. Never give up, never stop believing. Yeah. Yeah, I wrote that there this, early this morning. I had it planned out. Like, I've been, I, I do a lot of thinking, but yeah, that was me. <laughs> so now that you hear me read that, that back to you, how does that make you feel inside? What, what prompted you to write those poignant words? Uh, um, more of like, just like, a, like a lot of these young kids and, and anybody in general that kind of don't believe in themselves, you know, they, I see people giving up on themselves daily. And, um, hmm. I, I just, I just wanted to like send some good positive energy into the, into the world that like, you know, to maybe help somebody pick themselves up and stand themselves upright and get some, you know, get some good things done in their life and take a lot of, you know, adapt a lot of responsibility. Yeah. Just, uh, just, just really trying to help people. Right. Yeah. And like, as far as like a lot of the experiences I had when I was younger too, and like, you know, there's a lot of ups and downs in, in, in fighting professionally and you, a lot of days that don't make sense. And if you're a family man, and you know, you got to have a lot of good support and people to believe in you and, and all that. Stuff yeah. Too, so. Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's nice well, to hear I thought they were beautiful words when I read them. And, and uh, you know, you, you get a little bit of a platform sometimes, only a few times in your life. So you use this. And hopefully those words are going to reach somebody or somebody's going to watch this video interview uh, and hear those words and hopefully it applies to them. Yeah, absolutely. That's the goal. Awesome. Yeah. Well, Justin, I don't really have anything else to add. I'm just wondering, though, before we go, if if they asked you to go back, if you go back and would you do anything differently this time? Would you make sure that the contract was more uh, more solid or would you stick to your guns if they told you something different? Well, one help can't, like, I couldn't, I, you know, my fighting spirit, I, I almost feel like it was altered a bit. Like, it, I really felt like, you know, I was going to really turn that fight around and, and, and finish him. And I think I would go back. I think I would go back and, you know, try to challenge him mm -hmm. and give it a fair contest. And I'd like, you know, be the contract be more thorough and have three rounds. And, like, we all know, like, championship mm -hmm. fights around here are contested over five rounds, right? So. Mm -hmm. I'd really like to uh, really like to try again. Yeah. Well, I'd like to see you go back. I'd like to see you get your, your fair shake this time. So um, have yeah. they said anything to you? Did they say they want to bring you back at some point? Yeah. 
they did like you know right after right after the uh fight i was you know i had that contract in people's faces i approached bryce personally you know and had the contract in mm -hmm. his face and letting them know that like the sportsmanship and you know fair contestant you know we me and him had a mutual agreement as two gentlemen to to compete fairly and i feel like i was you know kind of got the shitty end of the stick a bit right so yeah yeah well you said that a couple times that it's like a gentleman's agreement it, it wasn't a gentleman's agreement it was a legal contract right well yeah that's exactly so it's more than that i mean if you and i have a gentleman's agreement in something and i renege and i don't fulfill my end then i'm just a shit uh, you know i'm a shit a shithead i'm a shitty guy if somebody yeah. has a legal contract i'm not a i'm not a lawyer but it should be binding i mean i don't know why they did that i, I don't like it personally so if no. you do go back, I hope you kick some butt. Thanks, buddy. That's the plan. I'm I'm taking like I'm the uncrowned champ. I was taking that fight home. Like I was gonna finish him in the third round. Yeah. 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 Well, I believe you and I'd like to see it happen. So make sure you keep us in the loop and you let us know when you're going over next time. Absolutely. I appreciate it, Andy. Okay. Well, Justin, uh, I'd like to thank you very much for taking the time to speak with me and persevering through all these technical issues. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, I'm really happy and I'm really grateful that you were my first video interview in this format. So somewhere down the line, if I might have a little bit of popularity or, or get a little bit of size, so you can always say that you were my first. <laughs> Absolutely. I'm honored. <laughs>